Brave New Wear Show, the Brave New Wear Show. Hey guys, I just want to say a lot of people in the comments have been saying that I'm poor. And you know what? <laughs> I'll let the necklace do the talking, you know? I see on both sides, like Chanel. Friends, welcome back to the Brave New Wear Show. My name's Christian. Today, I'm talking about a brand that is creating big waves in fashion right now, and that is Bottega Veneta. It's a, a heritage brand that has existed for a while, but now since 2018, under the new creative direction of Daniel Lee, it's taken on new life, and it is um, one of the brands that I think is most exciting right now. And I'm going to talk about the five different ways that it has transformed and it is kind of revitalizing the brand and is also kind of setting the pace and the ideas for high fashion right now. Before I begin, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe, like the video, I would love that. And I'm gonna try uploading every Wednesday and Sunday in the upcoming weeks, so stay tuned for this crazy, wacky content. So, if you know nothing about Bottega Veneta, it's a brand that started in the 1960s. It's an Italian luxury brand that was primarily known for its um, leather goods. Specifically, it has a signature weave that has been visible on everything from handbags to wallets to like briefcases for men. And in the 70s, they started this new campaign uh, with the tagline, your initials are enough. The idea was that it was a uh, stealth luxury type of brand. It's more about the quality than it is about flexing. So it was the anti-flex brand. Um, in 2018, carrying the brand or the company that owns Bottega appointed Daniel Lee as the new creative director. His previous position was the director of Ready to Wear under Phoebe Philo's Celine. You can see a lot of the same uh, design language in Daniel's Bottega as was visible in Celine, which is kind of one of the reasons that it makes the brand, I think, so cool is that we're seeing a lot of that old Celine in there. Let me start with something that isn't as impactful, but it definitely stands out to me. Point number one, the Chelsea. So Bottega in the last 10 years had been known for their Chelsea boots. They were well made, they had that crepe sole, and it was something that a lot of like men were interested in buying. Like there's an old Sanji video of him showing off like Bottega Veneta boots. So the Chelsea's were kind of a big part of their brand in the past. Under Daniel Lee, he's totally transformed the Chelsea in a way that feels very like modern, kind of alien, kind of creepy but I love these boots right now. Super chunky outsole. They've got the upper that comes like almost to like thigh, or not to your thigh. It comes like almost to your knee. Thing number two has to be the cut. So like I said, Daniel Lee is obviously uh, relaying a lot of his experience at Celine here at Bottega and doing both men's and women's, the cut is a little wider but I wouldn't call it oversized. There's kind of a sophistication, kind of like re-roll chic to the cut of the garments um, because like I'm thinking of like the men's and women's, you have like pants that break right at the shoe. So it kind of almost is like a little overlap. You've got coats and jackets that aren't cut slim and they're not cut like super wide or boxy. They're like just proportioned enough where it's a little bigger but it's not, it's not form-fitting. It's kind of a little more sophisticated. And what's kind of interesting about what Daniel Lee's doing with men is a lot of the garments are a little more perhaps feminine. At least they are more like they show skin more. Like he created that um, top that's like a racerback, um, like a tank top kind of thing, but the racerback is in the front. So you, you're showing a lot of your bod. And there's um, different like sweaters and like knitwear where kind of it's more phys like more of the skin is physically visible, which is interesting. It's an interesting approach for the menswear. Thing number three that Bottega Veneta is really excelling at is accessories. And I've said this a billion times on the channel before, but one of the biggest or most important financial backbones any luxury house is their accessories. They will basically make or break whether or not a house does well, in part because runways are so expensive. Um, the ready to wear is typically, it will buy and sell, but it's typically kind of the place setting for the shoes and bags that make the most money. So 
with Daniel kind of putting some emphasis or having a keen eye for accessories, that's a really strong move. And uh, one of the kind of key features that I see about a lot of the accessories, like the costume jewelry, is that it's very oversized, it's very dramatic, it's very much statement pieces that feel almost kind of like whimsical or strange. We've got like bracelets that are like really big and chunky and kind of structural, sculptural, globular. You've got a lot of chains. That's kind of why I want to wear this chain because he's doing a lot of chains for both men and women that are like huge and bulbous. The women's bags are really excellent. You've got a lot of bags that are playing on the signature Bottega Veneta weave, but doing so in a way that kind of feels a lot more modern. Um, like there's a slouchy one he has, and there's also kind of the regular cross body bag, but the uh, weave is very exaggerated and dramatic. Number four on that point has to be what Daniel Lee has done with the signature Bottega Veneta weave. It's the thing that everybody kind of recognizes the brand for, but for years, it's kind of been one way. The weave has been the small kind of interwoven, delicate and um, very technically cool thing that Bottega has done, but it's always been kind of the one size. What Daniel Lee has done with it is he's brought this weave pattern that Bottega is known for, and he's made it gigantic on like the bags I was talking about, or he'll take it and he'll create a puffer that's made with that weave, which I think is incredible. It is so dope and cool. Um, you also see it on like men's bags that are kind of like big totes, but it's huge and oversized. And I think it, it really screams to me, this is Bottega Veneta, but in a modern sense. And last on my list is gonna be leather. Like other uh, Italian houses like Prada and Gucci, Bottega has established itself or was known for its fine leather goods. And Daniel Lee is kind of tapping into that history and creating a lot of garments that are in leather. And if you look at the fall winter 2019 collection, there's a lot of wild kind of like motocross, like matrix-esque type of garments we've got leather jackets that come across like this. They zip up like this, and they've got this kind of really cool rib paneling detailing. We saw uh, like leather pants that were like really chunky and like uh, have the similar rib detailing met with the super tall Chelsea boots. So much of what Daniel Lee is doing, whether it's the weave, whether the weave he's wearing, whether it's the weave detailing that he's put in everything, whether it's like the oversized of crazy accessories, or it's the leather. I think kind of the focal point of all of the new Bottega is texture. It's like everything seems to be either like too big or weird or touchy, feely. There's something about texture that I think connects all of the designs right now, and it makes it so interesting. I guess it's just kind of like that thing where Bottega Veneta to me has always felt like a brand that is fancy and you'll see like a, an Italian guy, an old Italian guy walking down the street maybe with like a Bottega thing and you'd recognize it. But it didn't necessarily, other than the Chelsea boots, it never really stood out to me as being like, that's like high fashion, they're like driving fashion. Right now with Daniel Lee at the helm, they're one of the most interesting brands in my mind. So guys, thanks for watching. Please comment, rate, and subscribe. I'll be back soon. I love to hear from you. And I'm out.